Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having a great weekend. I'm filming this video on Saturday, so it's actually the weekend today. And I'm so excited because it is gorgeous outside. I feel like I haven't spent a ton of time outside since we got back from our vacation because we've just been in the house cleaning, catching up, working, things like that. But today it is so beautiful. I think it's like 75 degrees and sunny. And after this, we're going to go to a little local, a little local orchard that we'll sometimes go to on the weekends with my parents. They have live music and food and things for kids. So I'm excited just to be able to spend some time outside enjoying the gorgeous weather. So I hope you guys get to do something fun this weekend as well. It's not quite fall, but I love like this time of the year where it's starting to kind of transition into fall. Even if the weather isn't there, it just kind of feels like fall is right around the corner. So I can't wait. But anyway, speaking of fall, I wanted to go through and chat about all of the new makeup launches. There are some really good options for fall that I definitely plan on trying. And then some that I won't be buying as well. But there are also a couple of sales that I wanted to talk about in today's video as well. So let's jump into it. So like I said, there is a sale that I wanted to share with you. I think the 21 Days of Beauty is probably right around the corner. Typically, it starts end of August, very beginning of September. So I feel like we should be hearing about that soon, within the next week or two. And once we do, I'll definitely do a video of breaking it down and sharing what I recommend trying. But in the meantime, Macy's is having their 10 Days of Glam, which is kind of similar to the 21 Days of Beauty. So every day for 10 days, they're going to be marking down different products for 50% off. And these are like high-end and luxury makeup, skin care and hair products. So I was scrolling through, they have kind of like a sneak peek of everything that's going to be available. And there are some good products. It might be worth it taking a look to see if any of your favorite products or favorite brands are going to be discounted. I'm filming this on Saturday. I'm pretty sure Friday was the first day of the sale. So it's still going on for a little while. But yesterday they had a Sunday Riley kit for $65, but it was like $200 in value. They also had an It Cosmetics powder. Today there's another It Cosmetics powder on sale that I like. It's their Bye Bye Pores pressed powder, which is a really nice translucent option. And then they also have a Tarte palette. And then throughout the week, there are different products. Later on, I think next weekend, they're actually discounting the dry bar blow dry brush, which I really love when I wear my hair straight. I got that last year at Ulta, I think around the holidays, but I wasn't discounted that much at all. I actually paid like full price for the blow dry brush. And then I got free products like not free, but it was a value set that had the blow dry brush and products, but I would have rather just gotten the blow dry brush for 50% off. So anyway, I'll put a link in the description. If you guys want to check out the skill, check out the sale, you can kind of scroll through and see if there's anything that catches your eye. But once I hear about the 21 days of beauty, I'll definitely keep you posted. So usually the end of August is when we start to see holiday launches, holiday sneak peeks. I don't know if this is technically a holiday launch. It doesn't look like it based on the packaging, but it is a value set that might be worth picking up in the meantime. And I love the Kaja lip glosses so much. So I was excited when I saw this. This is the mini Lil Shots hydrating lip gloss set, and it comes with two mini glosses for $15. I think their formula is one of the best. It is so hydrating, just really comfortable. It feels really cushiony and a little bit thicker, but in a good way. It lasts on the lips really well. It's really glossy, not sticky. Definitely one of my favorites. So if you've been wanting to try their glosses, this is a really nice option. One of the shades is part of their permanent line and then one is new. So I do have the pink one, it's called Pink Drink. It's a really beautiful rosy pink. It's great for everyday wear, but the new shade is called Berry Slushy. It's so gorgeous, it's like a pinky purple and I don't have that one. That's not part of their permanent line. So I hope they make that part of the permanent line because their regular line of lip glosses, I think there's only four shades available and one's a clear. So I would love to see that like purpley one in the full size lip gloss. But this is actually a good deal in terms of value. A full-size lip gloss from Kaja is $19, and it comes with 0.14 ounces. This comes with 0.2 ounces total of products. So each one is 0.1 ounce, but it's $15. So you're actually paying less for more product and two different options. So I think I'll actually grab this set, even though I do have the full-size version of that other gloss. I feel like it's nice to have some of my go-to formulas in minis because I can just throw them in my purse and then keep one at home, one in my purse. So that's a really good deal. I just wanted to share it in case you were thinking about trying that formula. There are two bronzers I wanted to talk about. Mel Cosmetics is launching a new ultra matte bronzer for $39 each. And these will be available on their website tomorrow, or no, Monday, August 15th, and then at Sephora on August 30th. An ultra matte formula doesn't really appeal to me when it comes to powder bronzer these days. I usually like something that has a little bit of a glow, like a very subtle luminosity, not a full on shimmery bronzer, just something that makes my skin look 
just kind of healthy and naturally glowy. But this is a buildable ultra matte formula that blends like a cream and effortlessly, effortlessly melts into your skin, which sounds nice. It's supposed to be smoothing, give you sunless warmth. There are four shades. Based on this photo, the shades don't really look super appealing to me. They're very orangey, very red, warm toned, which I know a bronzer does provide warmth. I'm more of like a neutral bronzer fan. I don't want anything too orangey and warm and I don't want anything too cool toned like a contour, but I feel like some bronzers lean so orange and so red toned and that's a little bit too much for me personally. I like something a little bit more natural. So I don't plan on picking these up. I feel like I've discovered a few formulas that work well for me lately. The Beauty Pie Bronzer is super smooth. I still love the Flower Beauty Heat Wave Bronzer. I just tried the House Labs Bronzer in a video that's going up on Tuesday. I filmed it yesterday and I'm not sold on that formula, but I used it again today. It went on a little bit better. That's a very matte bronzer as well. And again, I just like like a subtle glow. It doesn't have to be over the top, just something a little more natural looking than an incredibly matte bronzer. So I don't plan on picking these up as well as any other powder bronzers for a while because I think I'm set for now. So I feel like I've heard a lot of good things about Merit products and I don't know which products specifically, but I feel like a lot of people get excited about the brand. I recently tried their lip oil. I have to say, I think it is pretty overrated. It's expensive. It's like a $24 lip oil and it just didn't last on my lips for more than a few minutes. So I wasn't into that, but I am somewhat curious to see what else they have to offer. They are launching a new bronzer as well. This is the Bronze Balm Sheer Sculpting Bronzer and it's available now for $30. So this is different because it's a cream. It's a sheer buildable bronzer to add a wash of natural looking warmth and depth. It's a lightweight cream formula and it comes in five shades. I do love a good cream bronzer. Today I'm wearing the Milk Makeup one with a little bit of the House Labs bronzer on top. I also love the NYX Wonder Stick, the e.l.f. Putty bronzer, the Makeup by Mario, Persona. I could list like a bunch of cream bronzers I love, which is so weird because a few years ago I hated cream bronzer. But because of that, like as I'm going through all of the ones I love, I feel like I don't need to buy anymore. You know what? I'm saying it right now, I'm going on a bronzer no buy until the end of the year, at least. I feel like bronzer isn't something that I get as excited about during the fall and the winter, even like the spring. So probably until early next spring, I just don't think I need to buy any new ones. I have a good bronzer collection right now, a lot of formulas that work well for me. So I think I'm going to push pause on any new bronzer releases and just not, just not buy them for now. Blush, on the other hand, is a little bit more difficult for me to skip over. I love blush so much this year. It's been like my number one makeup product. And About Face launched a new blush called the Cheek Freak Blush Balm. It retails for $18. There are 10 different shades. It's available now on the About Face website, and Ulta does carry About Face, but I didn't see this on Ulta's website. So I don't know if it's coming to Ulta or not, or if it will take a little while, but it does look like a really cool blush. So I think I'll probably place an order on the About Face website and try it out. I think I'll grab one shade. There are so many pretty colors. I feel like it's going to be hard to choose. And I love that About Face launches such fun colors. Like there are pinks and purples and corals. Just so many fun options, so many beautiful colors. So it's an ultra creamy, lightweight blush balm that glides onto the skin for a buildable wash of color. And it's supposed to stay in place really, really well. It's a cushiony formula that melts into your skin for a diffused natural look, which sounds perfect for everyday wear. Not everything that I've tried from About from About Face has worked well for me, but I just appreciate the brand. You know when you see a brand and you can admire them for what they do, that's how I feel about that's how I feel about About Face because they just launch really unique, fun, innovative products, and I like that they're not afraid of colors. So I do plan on picking one of these up. Fenty is releasing a new product that I feel like people will enjoy. It's the Ease Drop Lit All Over Glow Enhancer. So it says you can wear it alone or mix it with foundation. It's going to be $34 and there are four different shades. It kind of sounds like their version of the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I know Charlotte Tilbury isn't the only brand to have created a product like that that you can use as a primer, a highlighter, a mix-in, but I feel like they obviously did it well because people love that product so much. And I don't know that there's been a good, well, I don't want to say there hasn't been a good alternative, but I don't know if there's been another brand that's done it well enough to get as much buzz as the Flawless Filter or the Hollywood Flawless Filter, with the exception of e.l.f. with the launch of their new Halo Glow Liquid Filter, which a lot of people are saying is an identical dupe. I like a good glowy base from time to time, but I don't necessarily love it enough to run out and buy multiple liquid illuminators. So I don't plan on buying this one from Fenty, especially because I do have the e.l.f. one and that one works really well for me. It's $14, so not the least expensive, or no, what am I trying to say? Not the 
cheapest option out there. Like $14 is a little more expensive for e.l.f., but with the quality you're getting, I think it's worth it, especially because a lot of people are saying it is the exact same as the Hollywood Flawless Filter. So I think I'll stick with that, but this does sound like it could be a nice product, especially if you prefer this type of packaging or you prefer Fenty over Charlotte Tilbury or another brand. So before I get into some new launches from ColourPop, they're having a pretty big sale too. So they have a sales section on their website which I always scroll through just to see if any of my favorites are on sale because I always get nervous like my favorite shades are going to be discontinued, but they just added a bunch of products for up to 50% off. I'll kind of scroll through for you guys. I'll put it on the screen so you can get an idea of what's on sale, but they have a lot of products that aren't necessarily old launches like they're still somewhat new so they have so glassy lips for four dollars they also have these newer nine pan palettes that i really like for only six some soul body highlighters luxe lip oils lip creams super shock blushes bundles just so many products i'm not saying run out and buy these products just because they're on sale but i wanted to throw it out there in case we're placing a color pop order or you've been wanting to try a specific product because there are so many shades so many products discounted right now and it might be worth checking out i don't know exactly how long the sale will last but there are some really, really good discounts right now. ColourPop also has a new launch that I wanted to talk about. These are the Graphic Ink Liners. They're available now on their website for $9 each, and there are 10 shades. So normally eyeliner that comes in this form, like a brush that you dip into a pot, isn't my favorite, just because I find that the formula tends to be just very wet, and I almost make a little bit of a mess as I'm applying the product to the eyes. I also feel like it's not as precise as a liquid liner pen. I'm just a big fan of liquid liner pens, but I love the shades they launched. I wish they released them in their BFF liquid liner pen form because that is one of my favorites. I think that's a really nice option, but they don't have these shades. Like They have some colorful shades. I'm pretty sure I have a green, a blue, a burgundy, but there are some pretty pastels, a few other colors. So I think I might pick up one or two of the more unique shades that I don't have in other eyeliners and test them out. I've kind of been into colorful eyeliner lately. Today I'm just wearing a brown eyeliner from Too Faced. They released a brown liquid liner I wanted to try out, but it almost looks black on the eyes. But I feel like colorful eyeliner is just a fun way to add a pop to the eyes without doing like a full on colorful eyeshadow look. So there's like a light kind of like purpley blue that I really want to grab. So I think I'll probably just grab maybe one and see if I actually like that type of eyeliner or I can get it to work for me before committing to multiple options. I also launched the Mad About Hue palette, which is a 30 pan colorful matte eyeshadow palette. I did get this one in the mail as PR. So I want to use it and do like a really colorful look, something for fall, just like a jewel toned look. I think that would be so much fun. I am planning on using that in an upcoming video. I have a couple of like get ready with these plan. I want to do a full face of drugstore, a full face of elf. Maybe I'll do a full face of color pop just so I can use some of my favorites and then a couple of new launches as well. But the eyeliners and the palette are both available if you guys are looking for something pretty colorful. I'll link them in the description box below. There is a new NYX lip product and honestly NYX is becoming one of my top favorite brands. I find myself always looking to see if they launch something new when I'm scrolling through Ulta's website because it feels like everything they launch is so good. I have so many NYX products that I love that I've discovered over the past year or two. So I just get excited when I see they're coming out with a new product. This is the Smooth Whip Blurring Matte Lip Cream. It's available now on Ulta's website for $8. There are 12 different shades. I don't know, I kind of wonder if this is going to be similar to the Soft Matte Lip Creams. It sounds similar. It says this formula has all day full coverage wear that will blur away any texture or lines. So maybe it's a little bit more long wearing than the soft matte lip creams because I never found that those were like long wearing all day lip products for me. They were really comfortable, really smooth looking, and they stayed in place pretty well. I don't know if I actually, I don't think I have any in my collection right now. But I don't know if there is a difference other than the fact that these claim to be long wearing. And these shades look a little bit more bold and intense. If I remember right, I feel like a lot of the soft matte lip creams were more subtle. Do you guys still use the soft matte lip creams? I remember loving them. I think it was when, I don't know if you guys have been around this long, but I used to have a filming space that was like pink and it had gold hearts on it. That's when I loved those so much. Those in the NYX Butter Glosses were my absolute favorites. But I haven't tried a soft matte lip cream in a long time. So I am planning on trying one of these. I have one in my Ulta cart. I don't know which shade. I think it's one of the berry toned ones that I think could be fun for fall. 
Huda Beauty launched the Love Fest collection. It's available now on their website, and then it looks like select products are at Sephora for now, including the fragrance and the palette. But on their website, there are also cream blushes, a two-in-one mascara, some bundles. So let's talk about the palette. I think this is a really pretty color story. It's $29 and you get nine shadows. There's a mix of neutrals with a few pops of purple. It kind of feels like a more dramatic version of the Naughty Nude palette, but also just like a little more vibrant. Like there are brighter shades in here. It's really pretty, but I don't know. I mean, I know that I don't need it, so I'm going to skip over it. I think the colors are fun and the collection is just kind of a fun, again, like summer transitioning into fall collection. I don't doubt that the quality is nice. I feel like it's not, it's just not jumping out at me as an absolute must have. I've actually been wearing my Naughty Nude palette a lot. I feel like it's such a good palette for fall and I just, I love it. Every time I use it, it's very easy to use and I love the looks that I can get out of it. I've been using that one a lot. I've been using some throwback palettes like Urban Decay's Naked Heat. That's been one of my favorites lately. The Natasha Denona Bronze is always a favorite during the summertime as well. So I've been using a lot of older palettes in my collection that I've really enjoyed and I just don't feel the need to run out and buy a ton of new palettes right now. In case you didn't know, Makeup by Mario is launching a new shade of the Moisture Glow Plumping Lips Serum every Monday for the rest of the summer. So I checked the website and there are four launches at this point and they're all the creamy formula with no shimmer. So I wanted to wait until I saw all of the shades and then decide if there's one that I wanted to try. And there is, there's a few that I want to try, but there are probably two in particular I'm kind of going back and forth with at this point. I think I read online they're coming to Sephora I want to say beginning of September. I'm sure once they're all available, then they'll just launch all of the shades on Sephora's website. And I'm sure they'll sell out kind of quickly because the Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serums are a big seller. They're very hyped up and I think they are really nice. But right now they have Petal Glow, which is a soft pink. Honey Glow, which is a light nude. Blush Glow, which is a pinky nude. And then Pink Glow, which is a clear pale pink. Out of the four, I definitely want to try Honey Glow, which is the light nude but there are a couple of pretty pink shades as well. I just love the formula of this product so much. It's so comfortable, so glossy, so pretty. Honestly, I could buy all four of them and just be so excited, but I know that I don't need all four. That's why I'm waiting until they're all launched before I decide which shade to grab because realistically, one will be good enough for me that will cut it. And right now it looks like it will be Honey Glow. So I can't wait to see what else they launch. But once they're at Sephora, I'm definitely picking one up. There's a new launch from Cali Ray. It's a primer. It's called the So Blown Blurring Collagen Peptide Primer. It's available now for $36. So it's supposed to be a lightweight ultra blurring primer with collagen peptides to moisturize and nourish the skin. It sounds like a nice product. I don't know that it sounds like a must have for me. So I think I'll skip over it. I've really been into gripping primers lately. That has been my favorite type of primer just because it does extend the wear of my makeup, but typically they're also really hydrating, so they feel great on the skin. Today I'm actually using a smoothing primer. I pulled out my Catrice Keep Me Matte Primer, which is like a mattifying smoothing primer, and I do like the way that my makeup applied, but I don't know if it's going to hold up as well as when I use a gripping primer. We'll see because I'm going to be outside. It's going to be a little bit of a longer day. But I feel like smoothing primers are nice. But right now I'm just loving more of like a tacky base overall. So I don't plan on picking this up. Have you guys tried anything from Cali Ray? They have a lip gloss or a lip oil that I always think about buying. Like whenever I'm scrolling through Sephora's website, I almost add that to my cart every time. I feel like I'll try it at some point, but again, my lip product obsession has gotten a little bit out of hand over the last few months. So I've just been trying to cut back a little and not buy every single lip product that jumps out at me. Okay, two more products I wanted to talk about. Summer Fridays is launching their first makeup product. This is the Sheer Skin Tint. It's going to be available on August 16th. There are 10 flexible shades and it's supposed to add a touch of sheer color with a hybrid skincare meets makeup formula. So it sounds interesting. Summer Fridays is a pretty popular skincare brand. I haven't tried anything from the brand, but I've heard pretty good things. And this is their very first makeup product. And I feel like it makes sense for a skincare product that, or a skincare brand that wants to get into makeup to launch a skin tint with skin loving ingredients. I wish I was a fan of skin tints. They're so popular right now. Light coverage products in general are so big. And I don't know, I've told you guys this before, but I'm typically like an all or nothing fan when it comes to 
makeup in general, but especially complexion products, like I either want to apply a foundation that's long wearing, that's going to even out my skin tone, cover redness, cover breakouts, and just be something that I don't have to worry about throughout the day, or just skip foundation completely. For me, a skin tint doesn't usually provide enough coverage to even out my skin tone, but not only that, they typically just kind of melt off my skin and they don't stay in place. And I mean, it is winter, or no, it is summer. During the winter, I might have different feelings, but I don't know, I can't help it. My makeup preferences have always just been more like medium to full coverage. So as much as I would love to be a skin tint person, I'm just typically not. So I don't plan on picking this up, but I think it does make sense. That being said, if I was going to try a skin tint, I would try this one. Tula just launched a new skin tint and I just really like Tula products. I like so many of their skincare products and they also have a primer that's kind of like, it's like a tinted primer. When you apply it to the skin, it almost adds a little bit of coverage. It just evens your skin tone out a little bit. So they launched a skin tint that sounds nice. This one actually has 30 shades. It's light to medium coverage that has a natural radiant finish. And that automatically sounds better to me because when I think of a skin tint, I think of like barely there coverage. And some people might prefer that, but if it has medium coverage, I feel like it could work for me. So if I do end up trying a skin tint in the fall, you know, once it's not so hot and my skin isn't as oily, I might end up going with this one. Their skincare products just work well for me. And I just really enjoy pretty much everything that I try from the brand as a whole. So I might go with this one. I kind of take back what I said about not being a skin tint person. I know I'm not a skin tint person, but I also used to say I wasn't like a cream bronzer, cream blush person, and now I am. So We'll see. I'm not going to run out and buy it, but if it gets really good reviews, I might try it in the fall. Actually, one more product. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Translucent Airbrush Powder. Based on the packaging, it kind of looks like it might be a holiday launch. Like that kind of looks like a little ornament on the front and it's not their typical packaging. So I wonder if it's going to be limited edition or if they're going to launch it as part of the holiday collection, see how it does, and then maybe bring it back as a permanent collection. I actually really like the Charlotte Tilbury Pressed Powder. I think it is so good. It makes your skin look smooth, airbrushed. It really does give you a very flawless look. The reason why I don't keep it in my collection and I don't buy it is because I went through it so quickly. I typically do go through powder so quickly and I have been able to find some good alternatives. The Flower Beauty Powder is very similar. I think it's a dupe. It comes very, very close. In my mind, it's been a replacement. And if I'm going to go through it fast, I'd rather purchase a drugstore one. So that's the reason why I don't use it. But it is a really good product. Probably my favorite product from Charlotte Tilbury that I've tried, either that or her lip cheats. I think those are really nice too. Hey everyone, so it's actually the next day, it's Sunday. I'm just getting ready to export and upload this video, but I saw on Instagram there is a new release I wanted to share in today's video so we could chat about it as well. Natasha Denona is launching a new palette and a new collection. I almost said in yesterday's video, I wonder what we're going to see from Natasha Denona for the holiday season because I feel like it's been a little while since she launched a new palette. So there is a new one coming out. This is called the My Dream Collection. The packaging is a little bit different. I mean, it's like a neutral case but there's like paint splatters on it or ink spots. I'm curious to know the inspiration behind this. I feel like whenever Natasha Denona launches something new she goes on either like Instagram reels or stories and shares her inspiration behind the collection swatches and things like that. So I'm curious to know what this one is about. When I initially saw it I honestly thought it was the retro palette and then I looked at it again and it kind of looked like the glam palette with a few berry tones. So it does look like a mix between the two but there's also what looks to be maybe like a multi-chrome or a multi-chrome in there, maybe one of her trio chromes. So I don't know. Is it like a combination of some of her best-selling shadows? It's hard to tell based on these photos. There's not a ton of information out about this collection other than the fact that there is an eyeshadow palette, a blush and highlighter palette, and then also some lip products. So once I find out more information, I'll be sure to share, but I thought we could just chat about it based on this photo. It depends. Like sometimes when they release additional photos and swatches, it makes me want the palette more or less. Just based on this initial photo, I don't think I'll pick it up because when I look at it, it does remind me a lot of the retro palette and the glam palette and I do own both of those and I love to use them together. I feel like they are such a good combination. But because of that, I just feel like I don't really need this one. I don't think I've purchased a new Natasha Denona palette this year. Actually, that's not true. I did purchase two of her mini palettes, but I don't think I've purchased any of her bigger palettes. 
So what do you guys think? I think the color story is perfect for fall, but it does feel like something I already have. But I'm curious to hear what her inspiration is behind this and when it will launch. But I just thought I would share since I was sitting down and editing, I'm just filming this on my vlog camera. I hope you guys are having a good weekend and let's jump back into the video. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having a great weekend, that you're doing something relaxing and fun, that you're experiencing beautiful weather and just enjoying the last few weeks of summer. I think we still have about a month of summer, so not quite the last few weeks, but the last few weeks before people really start pushing fall. Although I love fall, but I won't wish for it too early because I do enjoy summer too. Anyway, let's cut this off. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you very soon with a new video. Bye.